Welcome. In a moment, you will meet someone who will take you on a mysterious journey from all over the world. From all over the world. From the world. From the world. From the world. From the world. Oh yeah, time for some biker news. We got coming up. Dude got busted for arson on a motorcycle club uh, clubhouse. Sad state of affairs. And also we got some great news coming up that clubs have been doing. Some biker weddings up in Daytona. It's kicking off down there. And later on we have a story of a real character. No. Let me rephrase that. A real piece of shit. That I can tell you. Let's get going right now. Uh, we're having some fun. Thousands of bikers rolled into Volusia County this weekend for Daytona Beach's annual bike fest. And today marked a very special occasion for many, with some using it as an excuse to actually tie the knot. West 2's Kelsey Thorid takes us to the big ceremony in downtown DeLand. Amid the rumble and roar of Bike Week, a group of couples shifted the party into an even higher gear. Okay, couples, are we ready to get married today? Woohoo! Let's get started. Six couples, many dressed in their biker best, took this year's festival as a chance to get married. There's all her. <laughs> It's all her idea. After 21 years. After 21 years, we decided to finally do what we should have done. He had always asked me would I marry him yeah. again, and I always said no. Yeah. <laughs> and I said yes to this. Yeah. You were like, only if it's during bike week. That's yeah. Right. Surrounded by bike-shaped balloons, even a biker cake, the couples married in a short biker-themed service outside DeLand's historic courthouse. By virtue of the authority vested in me under the laws of the state of Florida, I now pronounce you joined in holy matrimony. Ride forever. You may kiss your partner. Give him a kiss. So what's next for the newlyweds? Friends of ours have been married for 30 years. We're going to their vow renewal. So hi, Frankie and Debbie. We'll see what? you later. <laughs> we have three grown sons. We've got to call until we ran off and got married again. <laughs> oh, they don't even know you're here? No. <laughs> Love clearly in the air, even if the kids aren't there. Man, you know what's even cooler is an old school club wedding talk about a party people but that's pretty cool down in uh daytona uh we're gonna go to ny 360 local civic minded motorcycle riding club makes donations to food pantries and animal shelters and this is in oswego county and this was held at the first presbyterian church in mexico and park United Methodist Church in Pulaski to meet the needs of all those communities seeking assistance. In addition, uh, the food drive again gave the opportunity to help the fur friends at the Oswego City Animal Shelter and the Oswego County SPCA by providing them with much needed pet and food uh, supplies rock and roll man uh it goes on to say what times and all that good stuff but uh that is from the oswego county comments writing club rock on hamilton county man charged with arson for motorcycle club fire here we go a sheridan man is facing an arson charge police accuse aaron wright of setting fire a motorcycle club headquarters last may in a garage on second street in sheridan police say wright got into some sort of fight with the owner of homeowner rather about a month earlier regarding items in the garage they say surveillance video and phone records place right at the scene at the time of the fire Police also say that Wright made incriminating statements in a recorded phone conversation to his mother from the Hamilton County Jail. Yeah, Major I don't League think uh, people understand when you're making calls from jail, do not say anything because it's being recorded, dum-dums. Anyway, this guy, 
Notorious Outlaws Motorcycle Club member convicted for the brutal 93 slayings of a Richmond couple was denied in another effort for compassionate release. I remember this one. Uh, he was uh, convicted in 93. Now, Richmond is, I would have to say, 45 minutes from Chicago. Randall Miller. Yes, Randall Miller. 62 is serving two life sentences plus two. 240-month sentences for the murders of Morris uh, Gager, 74, Ruth Gager, 70, and a long list of racketeering charges he was convicted of in 2000. In his pleas uh, for release, Miller cited multiple health issues and threat of COVID-19, for which he was not vaccinated, he was also denied a request for compassionate release in 2020, uh, according to the filing. Miller, known as Madman, that he was, when he was an active member in the Outlaws group, was convicted in the gay, uh, Gager homicides with another Outlaws member, James Snyder, also known as Preacher. He pleaded guilty to the homicides and testified against 16 other outlaws charged in that racketeering case. That was a big one here in Chicago. Uh, the couple's son, Gary Gager, now 70, was initially convicted for their murders and sentenced to death. That's why you have to have all these appeals, man, when you're sentencing somebody to death, because you never know, like in this case. Uh, the ball began rolling towards Gary Gager's release and exoneration, but it was not immediate. Of course, the prosecutors stood by their case because they looked like stupids. Uh, 94, Gager's sentence was reduced to life in prison, and in 96, he was released from Stateville Correctional, where he spent nine months on death row. Uh, former Governor George Ryan granted him a pardon based on his innocence in 2002. In addition, the convictions for the bludgeoning and slashing deaths of the Gayer couple, uh, dairy farmers who ran a motorcycle parts business on their property, he was convicted of 34 racketeering acts. Those convictions were tied to the additional murders, attempted murders, and conspiracy to commit murder of rival biker gangs, specifically Hell's Hell, uh, Angels and Henchmen, the henchmen patched over to the Hells Angels, so it wasn't two different deals. Uh, he was also convicted of robbery and assault of rival bikers and associates. Uh, during that whole time, uh, the judge uh, called Miller's and the other outlaws' crimes barbaric and said the crimes they committed cry out for a sentence stricter than what was available, which was life in prison. He goes on to say, how is it that each of you become so disconnected from the mainstream of society, including your families, the judge said. I don't know how you could go home or participate in a family event knowing some of the things that you and your fellow out club, uh, club members did. Very different time back then that I can tell you. Very, very different uh, time when it came to that and I, again I want to make sure everybody knows with that story where it said Hell's Angels and Hell's Henchmen that 90's deal was with the henchmen wanting to patch over to the angels uh, that's where that uh, big bombing came from on Grand Avenue actually now it's the third largest explosion in u.s history it was a car bomb and then of course you had the rockford deal uh where matheus was killed others were targeted uh but this mad dog man he was a real piece of shit he was he's a real piece of shit i'm not embarrassed to say so uh he killed these two you know he killed this couple blamed it on the sun and then was laughing about it that the son got the death penalty and then he was given a life and then paroled, whatever it was. The point being is 
he was convicted of this. They're sitting here laughing about it. You had one of them. They testified against 16 members in that RICO case. So, yeah, it happens all over the place where it comes to testifying against each other. Uh, I won't, I'll be the first one to say that does. But what he did was just, man. And why does he think he deserves a compassionate release? He didn't give it to those couples. He didn't give it to that couple. No, he killed them. That's always what's funny, man. He did something like this and then, oh, you know, I found God. It's everybody finds God when they're in prison. Do you ever notice that? Everybody finds God. I'm just saying, man, it's pretty messed up.